Welcome to this podcast. I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf, and today in the studio with me, I have a very special guest, Dr. Jason Littleton, who's part of my Integrated Mind Network panel of specialist doctors. And Jason, thanks so much for being here today. It's wonderful to to have you with me in the studio. Thank you for having me, Dr. Leaf. It's an honor to be here. I'm very excited. I know we have a lot to talk about. Absolutely. Already we've done that a lot on the phone, so it's really great that we can yes. come into this in the in right. the studio. And you know, um, Jason, won't you explain? who you are and what you do. You're at medical, in, you're at PCP, but you've got quite a specialized approach to medicine and I love yes. it. Yes, well, thank you. Well, again, I'm Dr. Jason Littleton. I'm Chief of Family Medicine at Orlando Regional in Orlando, Florida. And, you know, I'm CEO of Littleton Concierge Medicine. I love helping people with habits to actually reach their full potential in their health. My focus is helping people live energetic lives. When we talk about living energetic lives, when we talk about having energy, we talk about good nutrition, good fitness, okay? Yeah. Good think through. You have to have a good mindset so you yeah. can have good habits. That's excellent. That's amazing. And you know what really excited me about your book and your work and, you know, we connected through social media, and, right. and, which is amazing. I mean, powerful. isn't that just a powerful medium? Just Absolutely. To, just to be able to know that there's people out there that think like we do, which yes. is so important. I mean, what really excited me was your approach to mind. You know, I've trained so many people, so many medical right. practitioners. Mind is my speciality. I've spent 30 years researching the mind-brain connection. And I get so excited when I come across a medical practitioner yeah. who also understands mind right. and the importance. Yeah, it's so you key. Think? You know, I mean, first of all, in my practice about um, 10 years ago, I realized when I, one day when I was in practice that I saw my patients, their lives, they were not changing. And I wow. said to myself, okay, what's going on? I, you know, I, I see people come in every three months for a follow-up, whether it was diabetes, COPD, and I don't see the numbers getting better. Oh, and wow. numbers, metrics are the way we can kind of determine if someone's improving in their health. And so one day I realized that people's lives weren't getting better because their habits weren't changing. And I realized that if you form good habits, you can change the way you live and feel. And part of that is, well, part of that is, you know, changing your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind is that autopilot mind. That autopilot mind is what you do basically with not having to think about it. Like if you're driving, you don't really have to drive. You've been driving for um, uh, quite a few years. You don't think about driving as when you first started out. It becomes automatic. You could chew gum. You could talk on the, the phone. You can adjust the radio. And you don't have to think about every single turn. And that's protective, actually. But Dr. Lee, one of the things I found is that all too often is that people's autopilot minds or subconscious mind is set sometimes on eating fast food and maybe not exercising and maybe even uh, destructive thought patterns. And if we can change those things, yeah, then we can get people into better routines. And did you find that in your practice that once you started altering the mindset that there was a change in their physical health? Ab ab absolutely. Because how people think in terms of what they do daily, their routines, then their habits and their patterns and their body will follow. Absolutely. That's so true because yeah. of the mind-body connection. We can't rule that out. Exactly. And for how many years, for the last 80 years in medicine, and it's been very much a biomedical model and it's still very dominant. Yeah. But there is an awareness now creeping in, isn't there, into, into medicine in, Ab about the importance of the mind-body connection. Absolutely. I think far too long us physicians have only looked at, um, you know, diagnosis and treatment and only looked at, you know, the body and we haven't thought about the mind. Mm. You know, as people, we're spirit, we have a soul and we live in the body. But all too often people have only focused on the body part, that third exactly. part. Exactly. And in order to change people in as far as, you know, weight loss or improve things such as diabetes and blood sugar and hypertension and things like that, you have to actually change the way you look at those things, change the way you eat, change the way you train, change the way you prepare the day before, mm -hmm. even if it's laying out your meals or thinking about how you're going to wake up at five in the morning and go running. These things require think through. Absolutely. It's, th it's thinking first and then it's the body following. Yes. And the body will just, the brain and the body will do what the mind tells it to do. And that's, the, that's absolutely the, exactly. So it's our mind is such a vital part. Now you speak about the four, um, what do you call the four energy? Meds, movie, drink, sleep. When I was writing my first book, the energy secrets to do the good life, which again was about having Can more you, energy. Sorry, would you mind saying that again? Sure. I always, you know, that rolls off my tongue. <laughs> you used um, to saying it. <laughs> I'm so, exactly. So when I, my first book, the energy secrets to do the good life was all about helping people that have more energy and just experience more in life. 
And, you know, in that book, I talked about a concept called meds, movie, drink, sleep. Mm -hmm. And really, those are what I call the four elite health laws. And it's something that anyone could, uh, you know, master and uh, really change their health, change their life. You know, um, briefly, when we talk about move, we talk about getting five minutes, at least five minutes of cardiovascular exercise a day. And so when I say five minutes, sometimes people scoff at that because they say, hey, Dr. Littleton, I can do 30. I say, no, no, don't do that. Just do five. Just do five. Just do five. Because if you master that and get your heart rate between a a zone of 50% to uh, 85% your resting heart rate, you actually can change how many calories you burn. You can change the way your body looks if you do that over time. That's amazing. So five minutes a day, you're not asking people to do a lot. You're asking for five minutes a day. Well, here's the key. Here's the key. So five minutes is something palatable. It's an excuse buster. It helps people say, okay, wait a minute, I can do this. But here's the, here's the, here's, here's the benefit. Five minutes you can reproduce next week. You can reproduce the third week. You can reproduce next month. Okay, if you're struggling to get out there and exercise, just doing five minutes and pushing yourself, you're gonna be able to form a habit. Habits start as a seed, and you have to let the seed grow. And so, you know, once you master that consistently one week, week two, you can add another five minutes. And now you go from five to 10, and you work your way up. Far too often, people just try to swallow that 30-minute thing, and they're not able, they can't do it again. They don't reproduce it. Things happen, life happens, and they aren't reproducing the patterns that lead to great health and wealth. That's amazing, I I love it. So five minutes a day, and what do you, and then building up, what do you recommend that they do anything that they, like to do well I usually recommend people do things like jogging or running okay but if you have bad knees if you have bad feet I recommend that you get a stationary bike on that stationary bike you can watch your favorite movie while you're just you know pushing along and you don't even have to touch the ground it's anti-gravity exercise and you can get the five minutes in and you can change your life that's amazing. Yeah, just watching TV in front of that, using that bike, getting that walker machine. Exactly. It's just a man. It's a it's a mindset change, isn't it? The whole it's a thing. mindset change. And then also, there's so much research showing that if you're doing the exercise with the correct mindset, you're increasing the benefit you get from the exercise. You're increasing right. the benefit you get from your food. Right. How do you find that in terms of your patients? Well, you know, first of all, I tell people when we talk about, you know, first of all, when we talk about the meds acronym, E is for eating, and we talk about eating organic food. And I tell people, you know, sometimes people want to just eat perfectly the entire week. And I say, you know what? That's too hard to do. Start with eating perfectly one or two days a week. Okay. Just yeah. so if you're going to focus on one day a week, use the other six to make sure that you plan and make sure that on that day you're perfect. So you eat uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks in between breakfast and lunch, lunch and dinner, dinner and bedtime. Mm-hmm. But you're eating good whole foods, mm-hmm. organic foods. So you're not making a mistake of this. So come noon when it's time to eat lunch you're not going to say well I had a salad plan but I made a mistake and I had a hamburger instead no that's not a mistake that's a decision that went wrong so I tell people Mm -hmm. that day that you plan Mm -hmm. that one out of seven days make it perfect and then what you want to do is once you get focused and you get used to that routine of making that perfect then you work on day two you work on day three and you build up that way because in my clinic I found that when people focus on the little things I actually joke about my name a little uh, little, little so change well. make a ton of difference <laughs> when people yeah. focus on the little things they can let that grow in their life and these are mind patterns and tracks that are forming these are new habits that are forming mm-hmm. so you're not starting with this you know huge elephant and trying to master that you're you're starting real small and you're working your way into good health, good habits and good well-being. I like that. So you're starting small and then you work your way in. Absolutely. And that's manageable. It's not telling someone to just completely change their lifestyle now. It's taking one day a week, it's right. taking five minutes and then it's slowly building up and getting, you know, and that, that in itself is helping to change the mind. Yeah, you're hardwiring new thought patterns. Which is so important. And I tell people all the time when negative thoughts come your way as you're working on uh, your exercise program, you have to counteract that you have to say something you have to say a positive affirmation to what you're trying to do so if you have thoughts that come your way as you're working on this body transformation on this and becoming more energetic saying hey you know uh, I feel tired today don't say that I usually tell people to say no I'm full of energy okay so you're correcting yeah. that negative thought mm-hmm. with a positive affirmation or if a thought comes your way as you're going through this uh, energetic transformation you know and it says something like you know hey um, I'll never lose weight I say I tell my patients never say 
say that, say, look, I'm, I'm losing more and more weight every day in every way. And when you do this, you reinforce positive habits. You make small changes in your life and it adds up to bigger changes later. Well, you t- you're so totally right, Jason, because these these research shows that it's not the a nine out of 10 people will put the weight back on that they lose. Right. And it's because of the mind. So once they, they might be doing the greatest exercise routine, they may have changed their diet, they may have followed the, all the best plans in the world, but then they their mind's not right. So they don't, they don't keep the weight off or they don't keep sustainability in their life. They don't form that habit. Right. And they found that the only way to transform that, and this is what I found with my work as well, and you've obviously found that with your work, is that as soon as you get the mindset change, as soon as people think and eat with their minds and live their life with their minds, so think it through, using right. their mind, that's when they're going to, so th- th- that's when they're going to find the sustainable long-term changes. So mind Absolutely. makes, it, and the research shows that. I mean, the research shows what we instinctively yeah. know to be true. The research supports that. Yeah. The research Absolutely. supports that. And then you're, and on a practical level, you're seeing this with your patients on a daily basis. Yes. And, you know, that's where, you know, the rubber meets the road. And I can really see what's working for people and make adjustments and things like that. The other two things in the MEDS acronym is D for drinking and S for sleep. And I help people to form better habits with drinking good fluids, you know, mm-hmm. uh, drinking water, drinking good fresh juices that they squeeze. And then, you know, dealing with sleep patterns. Sleeping is a part of having more energy and feeling better. I help, you know, the number one thing actually I've found that prevent people from getting sleep actually and I've, took a, I've taken a poll on this is that people have racing thoughts and mm-hmm. they can't turn their minds off so to speak to get sleep and so we deal with that we deal with that in my book I talk about in, in my first book The Energy Secrets to Do the Good Life and I also have words about this in my second book Energize Again I talk about how you can um, relax your mind make positive thoughts you know so that you can actually relax get sleep rest and then think about um, having a wonderful, uh, just extraordinary next day. And that's important. And so many times that hampers people, racing thoughts. Yeah, that's that's for sure. I find that also with, with my work and my research, that's one of the major complaints is if you ask people why they can't sleep, it's because they thought life is chaotic. So you thought that you get right. into bed and then your mind goes nuts and that's it, you can't, you can't sleep. And we have to sleep for regeneration of our body and so on, which is just, yes. it's so vitally important. Are your patients listening to you? Now that's something that I I would like to to understand are they and, and what is the key because most patients I, I know so many medical practitioners yeah. I work with so many over the sure. years and I find that's one of the key things that is the complaint that um, of, of my doctor friends is that patients will come in and they want you to give them a pull I'm tired it's my right. thyroid it's always something there's always right. something physical that they want to blame right. but they're too lazy very often to change the life patterns the lifestyle patterns which, which requires a lot yeah. of work Yeah. so are you getting the success and what are you doing well, to trigger that? That's the that's the beauty about having a concierge practice because in concierge medicine, you know, first of all, all my patients have my cell number. They that's can, very can, unusual. Well, it's a concierge <laughs> practice. I don't take insurance, and you know, really, um, I'm really giving them 24 seven care, so they can call me anytime. And part of the um, awesome thing about that is when you have a concierge practice like that, it's about accountability. You know, I actually become, a, so to speak, a part of the family, so uh, so to speak, with uh, with all my patients. And so regularly, I'm always in contact with them, saying, "Hey, you know, how are you doing with your eating? How are you doing with your weight loss? How are you doing with X, Y, and Z?" And they can call me in a traditional practice or in a conventional practice, you know, you only get about 15 minutes. Exactly. Um, you know, you might have a 30 minute problem, but you got to put in that 15 minute slot. And mm-hmm. there's so many distractions. Sometimes people just get frustrated from being in the waiting room and things like that. You know, I'll go to my patient's home. They can come to my clinic. I'll go to their office and we are accountable. Being accountable in terms of thought patterns, uh, as far as fitness, as far as exercise, this type of accountability brings success. And little by little, it actually leads to people living ha- healthier and happier lives. So what I'm hearing is two major things there. And the one is accountability. And the other one is the old fashioned practice of medicine, how medicine used to be practiced right, exactly. and how it got changed. Now we need to do another exactly. podcast about this because our time's come to an end now. And I definitely want to Love dive to. into this more because it's really this mind body connection and bringing the mind into medicine and accountability for right. our own health. These are vital factors that I would like to explore little bit more so I'd love to have you to come thank love you. you to have, have you come back again thank you for joining us today on this podcast Dr. thank Lincoln. you you've been amazing and just tell us your books again yeah so my first book was the energy secrets to do the good life and my second book is called energize again it's really a sequel to the first book and, and your webpage it's Dr. just jasonmd.com jasonmd.com that's easier to remember easy to remember 
thank you. This is Dr. Caroline Leaf. Thank you for joining me today.